I'm sorry, Steve. I tried to get her off me, Sean says. I can't do this without you, Stephen says with tears in his eyes. I'm not gone yet. Let me clean this up and we'll think of our next move, all right? Sean says with authority. Okay, Stephen says as they both go over to the couch and sit down. Sean opens the first aid kit and cleans his wound. I'm going to make a vlog, Sean says, turning the camera to himself. All right, Stephen says, but he is too upset to fight with his brother. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Another vlog here. I'm not sure if it's happening everywhere, or if anyone is even watching, but my brother and I were attacked on our camping trip. We were attacked by undead people. I mean cannibals. If you don't believe me, I was bitten by one. Sean holds up his bite. I'm telling everyone now, because according to the news, I'm going to become one of them in a few hours. At first I was coming on this camping trip to bond with my twin brother, but you see, the other day I got some news and didn't know if I could tell anyone. Now with the apocalypse here, might as well say it. I was diagnosed with a rare fatal blood disease. I can't even pronounce it. Maybe it was because after the doctor told me I went numb. I couldn't even believe it. Then afterwards I get home and my channel hits a million subscribers. So there you have it. I'm on a camping trip with my brother and I'm on borrowed time. And now it's even shorter. I will try to vlog as much as I can before I... Sean pauses. Well, you know, be safe out there, and thanks for the subs and love. Sean out. Sean stops the recording, and the loading screen pops up, and after a few blinks, the words upload complete appear. Sean turns to Steven and sees that he's even more upset. I was going to tell you before... Steven interrupts. Sean, we have to do something. You are not going to die on my watch. Steven gets up and goes to the back door and peeks outside. What are you doing? Sean asks. Can you run? How are you feeling? Stephen asks. I'm starting to get a headache. Other than that, I'm fine. Why? Sean asks. The car isn't that far. I'm going to go get it and come back here and get you, and then we're going to get the hell out of here. Do you understand me? Steve, I don't want to become one of those things. I don't want to hurt you. Just leave me here and save yourself, Sean says, stumbling a bit from dizziness. Sean, I will never leave you. Just relax. I'll go alone, and you... You just need to relax. But you said there isn't enough gas, Sean says weakly, as Stephen walks to him and then helps him sit down on the couch. Not an issue. Stephen walks into the bedroom and comes out with two large full canisters of gas. This will get us to mom and dad's at least, if not a gas station. Listen, this isn't a debate. Rest up and I'll be back. He goes to the door and begins to turn the knob. Stephen, if you come back and, well, I'm not, you know, me... Can you please put me down, Sean says. You're going to be fine, Stephen says, choking back the tears. Just promise me, Sean says sternly. It won't come to that, but yes, I promise. Now, I'm going to take the blade with me, so if I have to protect myself, it won't make so much noise. So I'm going to leave the handgun with you, Stephen says, looking at Sean, who is sweating and about passing out. He tries to speak, but Stephen cuts him off. Just rest. Stephen watches as Sean turns his back to the door. He takes one last look and leaves, shutting it behind him and locking it with the key he found in the bedroom. Stephen looks around and sees the lumbering undead all around. He knows he has to go and get to the car. He takes a deep breath and starts to run. He is trying not to be distracted by the fact his only brother is going to die, that these bastards are taking him away. He runs around a tree and comes face to face with a man. His face has been bitten off from his cheek to his upper lip, exposing his teeth. It opens its mouth and snarls in Stephen's face. Stephen swings the blade at its neck, and in an instant, its head is sliced off and lands on the ground at Stephen's feet. Its mouth moves as its body falls to the ground. Stephen wipes away the tears from his eyes and stabs the blade right into the head, and it stops moving. He doesn't wait around, he just moves faster and finally makes it to the car. He gets in and starts the car. He carefully drives through the forest, dodging the monsters, and after ten heart-stopping minutes, he cannot believe he is able to make it back to the cabin as easy as he did. He parks as close to the door as he can and gets out, and gets back into the cabin. He sees that Sean is not on the couch anymore, but notices the handgun is still there, as the fear for his brother grows. He then sees the bathroom door is closed. He creeps over to it and puts his hand on the doorknob. 
He puts his ear up to it, and he sees a slight movement coming from behind the door. He turns the knob and opens the door to see his brother facing the vanity mirror, away from him. He can't tell if it's still Sean, or if he has turned yet. So cautiously, he musters up the courage and says with a shaky voice, Sean? Sean slowly turns his head and looks at Stephen. Back so soon, huh? Sean says as a wave of relief rushes over Stephen, and he runs over and hugs him. Are you feeling all right? Stephen asks. Weirdly enough, I feel great. Sean says as he holds up the bite to show it is almost completely healed. The only thing that remains is the dried caked blood. What the hell? Stephen asks in shock. How is this possible? You were bitten, and then you got really sick. I thought, well, you know, Stephen says. I don't know, I felt terrible and laid down for a bit, but then I woke up and felt much more energetic. You're sure? Yes, I feel great. The bite stopped bleeding, and it even faded a bit, see? Let's just be careful, Stephen says. I promise, if I feel strange or get the urge to eat human flesh, I'll tell you, Sean says jokingly. I just don't understand. The news said... Sean looks at his arm and then sees the dried blood and stares off for a few moments. As if a light bulb goes off, Sean had a look of realization. I think I know. Maybe the blood disease I have that I was telling you about had something to do with this. Stephen is confused, but will take any excuse for his brother being alive. That's interesting. It's the best I got. When she bit me, she immediately stopped and backed away, like, like my blood was disgusting, or something like that. That would mean... Your blood even gives you immunity? Of some kind, like meaning it kills the virus? As Stephen says this, Sean notices behind him the front door to the cabin was left open, and an undead man has stumbled into the cabin and is quickly approaching Stephen. Sean grabs Stephen by the shoulders and pushes him away from the doorway. Stephen falls and hits his head on the sink, dazing him. The two fall to the ground. Sean is pushing his face away from him. Stephen shakes his head to clear his dizziness. Sean pushes up, and the thing is about to bite him as his nose touches the dried blood on Sean's arm, and it takes a slight sniff. It quickly stops and begins to crawl away. Did you see that? Sean asks as Stephen gets to his feet. I did. It smelled the blood and then took off. You were right. Your blood is like poison to them. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it's been a while and sorry this one's so short. I have an idea where I want to take this story and I think it'd be really cool put a whole new spin on the zombie outbreak dramas. But um, I'm going to be writing some more and getting some more recorded soon. So please stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe and always stay scared. Thanks.